Alright, so we got a little video on how to set up the high burn rotary. So, first thing is I've got a DeWalt drill here I use to let my bed up and down. This little uh, life hack that I use because it does take a little while if you've got the manual bed to make the adjustment. So I'll wind it down, make room for the rotary. And then right back here, you've got a connector, you've got to disconnect. Some plug, and then you take the cable on the power burn rotary here and connect it back into that plug, seat it in place, and thread it down tight. Snug. All right, so back over here to light burn. Um, there's a few things that we have to do to get the rotary set up. The very first thing we want to do is go to the edit menu and then come down here to machine settings. I'll click on machine settings and it's going to pull up the settings that are currently in the controller on the machine. All right, so we'll go down here, excuse me, and what we're going to do is make sure that we do not lose our settings. So we're going to save these to file. That way, after we change settings for the rotary, we can always go back and get our default settings. So I'm going to go save to file and these are going to be our machine settings. Just remember where you saved them. Uh, so I'm just going to call these standard machine I'm gonna go 06 2022 all right so I know these are standard machine settings 06 to uh, 2022 and I can reload these settings after I'm done using uh, the rotary all right so we're gonna save okay so the reason you have to change settings is because where you can accelerate very quickly with the laser head um, what I'm calling the laser head you can accelerate quickly across the axis when you're just uh, engraving wood or plastic or whatever you're engraving you can't do that uh, when you're running the rotary so what will actually happen if you accelerate too quickly these rollers turn too quickly and it will throw your cup off or it will slip on these belts and what that'll do is it'll get you out of position so the uh, it'll mess your design up so we have to change acceleration, we have to change some of the speeds and things like that just to avoid some of those types of problems. What I'm do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the settings that I have. And again, I'm running an 80 watt Omtech laser, running the Lightburn software. And I'm gonna pull my settings up. And these are gonna be, uh, more than likely, are gonna be pretty good starting points for you uh, to start from. And I'll also put the settings screenshots in the uh, description of the video uh, below in the comments. All right, so I'm going to load from file because I've already got uh, some some pretty good starting set points. Uh, so I've got uh, my rotary settings. These are actually uh, 617 right here. All right, so I'm loading them. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write and make sure they're written to the controller on the laser. And then I'm going to scroll so you can see what those settings are. Uh, you can see everything here in cut parameters, the engraving parameters. If you compare these to the baseline that you had on your standard settings, you'll notice that a lot of the acceleration numbers and things like that, some of the speeds have changed. Uh, again, just to make sure that your pattern on your cup uh, will come out right. It's, it's different than when you're engraving, engraving wood. So these are the settings that I've got in here. You can see written to the controller. We've reviewed the settings. I'm going to hit OK. All right. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to laser tools. In previous version, uh, the rotary setup was under a different menu item, but in this version 1.104, it is now under laser tools. So we go to rotary setup. And it's gonna ask a few questions here. Are you using a chuck style ro uh, rotary or a roller style rotary? This is a pie burn, we're using a roller style. You have to make sure that your uh, rotary is enabled right here with the switch, mirror output to rotary. Um, I can imagine that's just flipping uh, text, but I've never used that. Uh, which axis do you have it plugged into? In my case, uh, we plugged it in on the Y axis. And this is a number that's probably the most difficult uh, to figure out, the steps per rotation. Um, and then the roller diameter, that's actually gonna be the diameter of this roller right here on the pie burn. So on the back end of the pie burn, all you have to do is I've got a clear ruler here. All you do is take the ruler and measure across the center of the roller 
and when you do that you'll see that you come back around 63. Also take into consideration the width of the bands because those actually come out a little bit further than the roller you're probably one or two millimeters on each side so when you take the measurement you actually may want to tip this up and get a better angle um, when you take the measurement but that is the roller that you're measuring from one side of the rubber band to the bottom side of the rubber band and I know just from past experience that comes out to 63 millimeters uh, the next thing that you want to do is you want to get the circumference of the cylinder um, that you're going to be engraving so in this case it's going to be a cup and Lightburn does a really good job all you have to do is give it the object diameter it'll do the math for you and it'll shoot out circumference so here's the cup that we're working on same thing I've got my clear ruler comes in pretty handy you could use calipers if you want to be super uh, precise but you want to measure from the outside diameter so all the way from the outside of the cup to the other outside of the cup in this case we actually come in around 88 millimeters is where we come out so i've already got that plugged in 88 but just to show you how light burn will actually calculate for you if you were doing a bigger cup and it was 98 you can see that the circumference has jumped up to 307 and most people probably know but the uh but circumference is actually the measurement all the way around the outside edge of the circle so you give it diameter it does the math it tells you how big around this item is all right so just to show you it does the math all right so we're going to change that back to 88 and we're going to hit okay all right so now we have got everything set up for the rotary so we went into the machine settings we set it up uh, so it knows that the rotary is on our y-axis we've given it the roller diameter we've uh, calculated acceleration uh, we've done all the things that we need to do and now what we've got to do is try to figure out our steps per minute and I know that I've already got my steps per minute dialed in so what I'm gonna do is actually change this to an incorrect number for my machine so I can show you what would happen if you had the wrong number in so I'm just gonna put it at 5200 steps per rotation and that's how many times that motor has to turn to give you a full 360 degree circle so let's say that number needs to be 4,900, which I know it does in my case, but if it is at 5,200, then what's gonna happen, an object is gonna be skewed. You may have an intention to make an object that, that is 100 millimeters wide, and it may come back at 110, or if you go the other way, it may come back and be at 95. So now if you're trying to draw a circle or an oval or even text, uh, it's gonna be skewed and it's not gonna be to the proper proportions. So that's why this number is so important. But again, it's a little bit trial and error. Uh, fortunately, uh, I do know where, where it needs to be, but we're going to intentionally start at an incorrect number at 5200 just so I can show you um, what happens if it's wrong and how to get it back to right. All right. All right, so the next thing we want to do, very simple, is we want to draw a rectangle. And I try to use a good even number. I like 100 millimeters. So I'm going to go with a 100 millimeter rectangle. All right. All right, so I've got a 100 millimeter rectangle that has been drawn here and uh, it is 16 uh, inches or 16 millimeters wide. All right, so the reason we're gonna do this is we are gonna send this to the cup. And I know that for my machine, if I want, if I want my engraving, let me show you, if I want my engraving to go this direction, I know that I have to convert my shapes to go this direction on Lightburn. Now, it may be different on your machine. It may be different depending on how you have the orientation set up in Lightburn. Uh, but that's just something I figured out from trial and error and that's something that you can figure out as well. All right, so we've got a 100 millimeter rectangle drawn and we're gonna send it over to the cup. First thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and, and well, I'm gonna make sure it's set to line here. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna change this to uh, line mode. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and frame it just to make sure I'm in the area that I want to be in. Okay, all right, there we go. All right, once it stops, I'm gonna go ahead and send it over to the machine. All right. 
And what I do to protect the cups is I actually will take this, uh, it's like duct tape, but it's foil tape. It's like wrapping adhesive aluminum foil around your cup. And then I'll cover it with just some painter's tape. And what that'll do is you can do all the testing and experimenting you want to do without actually damaging the surface of your cup. And it's kind of cool. And then if I need to do another test, I just slap on another piece of painter's tape. I'm back good as new because the laser will not cut through that foil tape. The only thing it will do is it gets a little bit hot and some of the adhesive will be left on your cup. All right, so what we've done, if our steps per rotation are correct and we put in the correct diameter and we've got the right roller diameter here, then what we should have on this cup is a 100 millimeter rectangle. So I'm gonna grab my tape measure and we're gonna see if we are on or off. And we should be off because I know we have the wrong settings. All right, so here we go. I've taken the measurement here and we have come back at 105, maybe 106 millimeter rectangle. So that's because our steps per rotation are off. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna slap a new piece of tape on this thing right quick, put it back on the rotary, and then we're gonna make an adjustment to our steps per rotation, and then we're gonna do another rectangle, and we're gonna see if we're any closer. Once we get this rectangle to be exactly 100 millimeters, we know we have our steps per rotation dialed in perfectly. All right, so back to light burn. Here we go, we're gonna go into our laser tools menu again. We're gonna go down to our rotary setup, and all right, so we were aiming for 100 millimeters. We ended up getting 106 millimeters. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take our steps per rotation down. And again, I knew that 4,900 was the right answer, but again, the rectangle is too long. We're gonna take our steps per rotation to a lower number. All right, so we're going to 4,900. I'm gonna hit okay. 4,900 steps per rotation, hit okay. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing. I put a fresh piece of masking tape over the rectangle that we uh, that we cut out before. I'm gonna go ahead and frame this to make sure I stay on my tape and I don't get into the cup. Let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the cup just a little bit, make sure I'm gonna frame it one more time. Okie dokie. All right, looks like that's gonna be pretty good. Here comes the stop. I'm gonna go ahead and send a rectangle over. There we are. We've got the tape measure back out and we've got the measurement and we're actually dead on 100. So now we know that we've got our steps per rotation right. So once you do, you've done that, you're ready to go ahead and create a, a design and send it over to the cup. And again, always, always on my first pass, it's smart to uh, leave the tape and the foil on there and put your design into the foil first. Uh, and then once you feel comfortable that you've got everything oriented properly, your dimensions are correct, it's not skewed, um, you know, everything's in proper proportions, then remove your tape and then do your engraving on the cup. That'll save you, um, that'll save you a lot of lost cups just because either a machine setting won't have loaded properly, you've made a mistake, maybe you've got something wrong on your design, whatever it might be, uh, you can save yourself a lot of headache by just take a few extra minutes and just cut it into the tape first and, uh, and, and then make sure you're 100% accurate before you move forward with engraving the cup. So back over here, go. I'm gonna go to edit, and I'm gonna go back to my machine settings. And now I'm going to um, actually uh, save to file again, and that's gonna save my rotary settings. So I'm gonna go save to file. I'm gonna call it uh, that rotary best. I'm actually gonna put a new date on this. Actually, I'll, uh, I'll keep my other one, but I'll go ahead and name this one. Uh, turns out I've been running the rotary actually off by uh, some steps per minute, or maybe something has gotten out of adjustment. But either way, my cups have been turning out good, so I've been pretty happy with it. So let's see. We're going to go, today is the 17th of June, so 6-17 June, and I'm going to go ahead and save that uh, setting. All right. So now we got that. I'm gonna go ahead and just write it to the controller. It's been written to the controller. Hit OK. All right. So then uh, the next thing we do, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw a pattern in here, some kind of words or something. Maybe make a cup for my wife. Uh, okay. So I put together a little little text design and light burn, and I actually have to rotate mine 90 degrees, and I do a mirror image. So I actually flip it using the little mirror button. Where is it? Right. Here, flip it right there. All right, so, and I also have a touchscreen laptop, so I just screwed the world up. Okay, so back at it. 
So I put together a little saying, my wife is Mexican, this says, I'm bilingual, bitch, I ha ha, and ja ja. So I'm gonna print that on the cup. Um, again, it's rotating 90 degrees and flip to an inverse. And that's the way it's set up on my machine. You may discover through a little bit of trial and error that you don't have to flip yours or your orientation is different. You don't have to rotate 90. But because of the way I have set my machine up in Lightburn with the orientation, uh, the way it is, that is what I have to do. So again, a little bit of trial and error on your part, you'll be able to figure that out with not, not too much trouble. All right, what I'm gonna do is do a test burn. So I've got uh, some more foil tape and some masking tape on my cup. And I'm gonna test burn that masking tape to make sure my pattern comes out right. I've also set this to line instead of fill because I don't really need to see all the details. I just need to know that it's gonna be the right proportions. It's not skewed, you know, it's not stretched. It's gonna be on the right place in the cup, all that kind of stuff. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and frame the image and make sure I'm in the area I want to be. Okay, looking at the cup, I'm on top of the tape. I'm not too far down, I'm not too far up. Uh, that's about the right size that I want. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and do my test burn on the tape, hit start. Um, you may wanna put air assist on if you do this. Um, the tape can catch on fire a little bit, not really a big deal, but it can. And then I've got my exhaust fan turned only halfway, so it's not really sucking all the, the air out either. I'm going to blow on it to keep the fire from going off. I'm going to pause it right quick. You'll see what I'm getting out here in just a minute. All right, so we just finished up the little test burn. It only took about a minute or so, but uh, you can see I did catch tape on fire, but that's not really a big deal. I can still see the proportion of the letters. It says I'm bilingual, even though it caught on fire. Uh, bitch, um, I, ha, ha, and ja, ja. And it's, the letters are proportioned. Um, I can tell they're proportioned pretty well. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this foil tape off, take the masking tape off, and we're gonna do an actual burn of the cup. Okay, so the tape is off. Come back over here to light burn. I'm gonna go ahead and change from line to fill. That way I get full, um, full fill of my text. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and double click here. Uh, these power settings are probably pretty good. Mode fill, bi-directional fill. Um, let's see, advanced, flood fill. If I'm not mistaken, I want to turn flood fill off. I think I've had some problems. Um, let's say the laser engraves all the way to one side, but it skipped a part and it has to go back. If it goes back, I've noticed that it will miss segments and the pieces won't line up. So when you turn flood fill off, that usually avoids you having that problem. And I, I forget to do that sometimes and mess cups up. But we're gonna turn flood fill off. We're gonna hit okay. I've got uh, my power settings just in a place where uh, I, I know they'll work just from past experience. It's 316.7 uh, millimeters per second, 35% power. Yours may be different. Um, uh, depending on what you're doing, what kind of cup you have, what color the cup is sometimes, and the machine that you're running, all that, all those things make a difference. So I'm gonna hit okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and send it over to the machine. All righty. So we got some engraving going on. And I'll speed this part up a little bit. That's really all there is to it. We've got a cup. I'm bilingual bitch. Uh, ha ha and ja ja. Now I'll clean it up with a little bit of that LA Awesome because that's what everybody says you ought to do and it works pretty good uh, from Dollar General. And uh, we've got a cup. Um, so the next thing I'll do is I'll show you how to just put all your settings back, hook everything back up the way it was. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move the carriage out of the way. It should push pretty easily since it's not hooked up. I'm going to unhook the cable the same way we hooked it up. Turn it counterclockwise until it loosens up. Pull the cable out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this axis back up. Turn it until it goes. I don't have the machine powered off. It is probably smart to do that. But I like to live life on the edge. Alright. Got it. Now we're hooked back up. So now all of our controls on our panel are back in working order. We can move left, we can move right, we can move forward, 
We're gonna move backwards. Everything's back to normal. Okay. All right. So all this cool. Pie burns disconnected. Um, move my cup out of the way. I keep the pie burn in the little padded box that actually came from right here in the garage. There we go. All right. And then now I'm just gonna wind the bed back up. That works pretty good. That's like cool as heck. Put the drill to it. All right. Bed's back up pretty close to where it ought to be. Going back over the light burn now. All right, so we're gonna go to edit, and we're gonna go to machine settings. And we saved that file before, if everybody remembers. Um, we saved our default settings. So we're gonna go back to our default settings. Load from file, and where I saved mine was in my OneDrive personal file here. And I'm going to go back to my sta standard machine settings. Load them up, reading controller, go down here, and we'll hit right. Controller settings written successfully. I'm gonna hit okay. All right, we, I'm gonna go back to laser tools and just make sure my rotary is disabled. It's actually still enabled, so I'm gonna go and disable the rotary. Again, that was in the laser tools menu, rotary setup, disable the rotary right here. And now you will be back um, to normal settings um, and just uh, that's really all there is to it everything will be uh, completely back 100% to normal next time you want to pull your rotary out go to laser tools you do your rotary setup you enable your rotary you hit ok you'll go back to tools you'll go excuse me edit you go back to machine settings and you'll load from file this is if you're going back to your rotary You'll find that rotary file that you saved. And that's going to be my rotary settings uh, 617. Actually, I need to change that. That was actually supposed to be uh, rotary settings. I didn't name it properly earlier. I think so. There we go. Got it. Rotary settings. And then we'll write it to the controller. Right. And hit OK. And now we'd be back in rotary mode. It's that easy. That easy. Yeah, it's that easy to make a pie laser. Set up your pie burn uh, with a Omtech 80 watt laser. Easy peasy.